back to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, my co-host Aurelio Martinez. All right, we're here for our third segment, which is a fan favorite, what we call open discussion, otherwise referred to as, come on, man. <laughs> so here's what we talk about. Anything that's, that's rising that has been uh, pretty much com uh, conversation in the boxing community, you want me to start or you want to start? It doesn't matter. Take it away, because uh, I want to talk about some possible matches coming up. Okay. Well, I want to talk about in the last last week or so, we had, you know, um, Eddie Hearn over there in, in the UK. He and Amir Khan came to a meeting of the minds, which is unbelievable yep. the way they both trashed each other for so many years. But anyway, Amir Khan is back under the guidance of, of Eddie Hearn, and he said he wants to uh, make another run at the welterweight title. As a matter of fact, he said he's looking forward to being welterweight champion again. Um, I don't understand how this all comes about. You know, Amir Khan is, has been so vocal about he thinks he's the best. Um, the last few fights that he's had where he's fought some of the best, he got smashed. So I still don't know. But then everybody knows I'm not a fan of Amir Khan. Okay, well, let's, let's, you're saying he's back. Okay, well, why is he back? He never left. The only reason he hasn't been active is because he, he refuses to fight anybody. Well, he, okay, so, so. For, for you to say he's back, he's not back. He's still in the same boat he is. If he doesn't step up and fight somebody, he's, he's, he'll be right where he's at. He's well, got to fight well, someone. I, I agree, but he's I'm, got using, the I'm name. using the words Ed, of Eddie yeah. Hearn. Eddie Hearn said he's back, he's part of the UK family, and that they plan on you well, know running through the welterweight division, which I think is nonsense. But let, let me say this. Eddie Hearn said that he wants to have him a couple of tune-up fights, which he called tune-up fights. Um, I want to make a suggestion, okay? <laughs> and everybody's going to laugh at this, but how about a tune-up fight with him and Breedis Prescott? Breedis Prescott, as everyone remembers, knocked out Amir Khan in 30 seconds at Manchester Arena oh, in England. Right, right. But, but let me build, the build up to that, if you remember, is uh, Breedis Prescott said, he's from Columbia, and Breedis Prescott said, I'm going to England, I'm going to knock his ass out, and I'm coming home. Yep. He went, knocked his ass out in 30 seconds, went home, Anytime anybody mentioned the name Breedis Prescott to Amir Khan ever again, he said he has to have more fights. He's got to be more of a name before I'll fight him. Well, you know what? That, that's actually, in a weird way, that's actually almost the perfect tune-up fight for him. Because it Amir will be Khan, a tune-up fight. Amir Khan has lost his last, I mean, uh, uh, Breedis Prescott has lost his last three fights. Okay. okay. More like last ten. No, I he's mean, lost his. He, uh, stop it. He's yeah. lost his last three fights. Okay. Breed, so this is a perfect. Breedis is in making money mode. He's not in, in 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 trying to make a name and win fights. So. But we do that, agree that, that this is a perfect fight for him. You I know, agree because let him come back and it's one American will win. I hope so. But he will. He'll win. I, I don't know. Prescott. Yeah, no, he'll win. He'll Prescott's win. still a tough. I, I told you before, and y'all know that I said this many times. Breedis Prescott was a tough out for anybody. If there was such thing as five round fights, because for five rounds there's hardly anybody that can deal with anyone it. can beat Breedis now. The the the, the 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 blueprint is out. All you gotta do is get past the two first rounds when he's gonna two. come. Wait, when he's gonna Stop. come and try to try to uh, hit you with his haymakers, and then it's over. Breed, Breed, I mean, it's a perfect fight because you're limited as to who but you can have. Only reason that was kind of a Amir joke Khan. because that's kind of a joke because uh, Amir Khan will never entertain that. And even if Eddie, he said that to Eddie Hearn. Uh, Eddie, I mean, uh, Eddie Hearn mentioned that to him. Eddie Hearn would say no. So I'm going to let you take it from here, but I'm just saying that, you know, from the nonsense, I just call it nonsense. Amir Khan is back, according to Eddie Hearn, and he's going to run through the welterweight division. Well, let me tell you something. See, I know you just don't like Amir Khan, and that's fine. Nope. That, that, that's fine. Never have. But let me tell you something about Amir Khan. Amir Khan is very marketable, and he will still bring big fights. Maybe not so much in the United States, okay, but back in the U.K., he will sell out arenas. He'll do that. So why not? Why not? Eddie Hearns is making a very smart move. He's making a very smart move. It's not going to be as easy as Eddie Hearn thinks to bring in fight because Amir Khan has a glass chin. We know that. Once he gets tapped, he's going down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to be very selective. And you just can't bring in no names uh, because it, it, it degrades his... Because his, his name is still up there in the top... top uh, um, well, the, the word is out so, on him. You're so, right. The word is so. out on him. So it's going to be tough. But over there in the UK, if they're going to be satisfied to bring guys that are over in Europe, you know, to find if that's what Eddie Hearn is talking about, that'll be And fine. that's what he should do. Well, I mean, they all do it. I mean, look at uh, uh, Joseph Parker. I mean, he he rose up to, to the thing, and he's in Australia. But, I mean, they did the same thing. 
after he got a name and started to get a name and started to get a following, started selling out arenas out there, he didn't fight anybody. Well, remember, okay. Joseph Parker was a big fan of radios. For no, I was a big fan of his. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Okay. And, and I still am, because okay. I, I like him, he's got talent, but you have to fight someone. When you, when you don't fight someone for such a long time, it hurts a fighter rather than it helps them, okay? Because they, they become compliant, they become uh, satisfied in what they're doing. So when they get in the ring, uh, uh, it doesn't happen. So that's what I want to talk about anyway, so we're kind of into it. Some upcoming fights. But he's, going to, he's, he's stepping in here to fight uh, Joshua, okay, Anthony Joshua. That's going to be a tough fight for him because... Uh, Joseph Parker, as good as I like him and as good as he is skill-wise, he hasn't built up to fight someone like uh, Anthony Joshua, where Anthony Joshua is fighting, coming off Klitschko, he's been fighting. It's going to be a tough fight for, 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 for uh, Parker, very tough fight. I mean, what do you think about that fight? I, I agree with you. I, I, you know, I, I, he was your, your favorite for yeah. the longest, and I kept asking you, who has he fought? And you kept saying, well, they're building him up, they're building him up, and he's going to be a world champion. Well, his competition started to taper off, and now he's kind of an, uh, an also-ran. But then now he gets to fight with Joshua, and he's running his mouth. He says he's going to knock Joshua out. Joshua's never seen anybody like him. So it's interesting because it's always interesting when you have <clears> two <throat> heavyweights, okay, because literally anything can happen. So yeah, that's, it's a good fight. Well, I, I give Parker a chance just because I'm not a real big fan of Joshua. I think Joshua... Uh, uh, his his whole uh, claim to fame was when he beat Klitschko, okay, mm -hmm. and and that was that was a lot of heart because because he wasn't winning that fight, mm -hmm. uh, but he did catch Klitschko with with a shot. And like you say, heavyweights are a different a different breed. They're not like lightweights. Uh, the heavyweight you get hit with a shot, they're going down. Mm -hmm. So so uh, I'm kind of anxious to watch that fight. I'm kind of anxious to fight that. Let's let's do, well, we're talking about heavyweights. Uh, uh, Ortiz, does he got a chance against Wilder? Not one chance. Is Come on, one. man. Hey, man, not a chance. It's no ball in hell. Anybody that's seen <laughs> Luis Ortiz fight the last couple of times, he's he's like like he's swinging in oatmeal. Um, the one thing you know about uh, uh, Deontay Wilder is, and I I move ahead a little bit. Remember, I told you yeah. Wilder couldn't beat Joshua. I'm second guessing myself now because the one thing that, that, that Wilder brings, he's full motion. I mean, he's coming full motion, coming full bore, and I don't know if these guys are ready for what he brings, but I still, you know, we saw clips before over the years, that uh, clips of, yeah. of Deontay Wilder sparring Klitschko, and Klitschko tapped him on the chin, and he did the, the perp walk, you know, yeah. and we thought he might go down, but that's that's different, you know, sparring's a little bit different than these fighting. Are, but these are big boys. Yeah, but they're, they're, that's exactly right. Heavyweights, anything can happen. Well, going back to Ortiz, don't underestimate the skill that Ortiz has. He's... he's He's a typical Cuban fighter, and he fights like a Cuban fighter. They are very defensive-minded, okay? So they don't get hit. Wilder's not going to come in and hit Ortiz like he did Stervine. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he he's is. not. You can't. He will. You can't. You can't. And then <laughs> That's a good example. <laughs> but, but it's not going to happen. Be a good fight. And, he's gonna have to, and he's going to have to worry about getting hit by Ortiz. Stervine wasn't, wasn't throwing any punches, wasn't even trying. Ortiz is going to go in there and try. I mean, Ortiz is going to try. So, like Mike so. Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get hit. Yeah. And right. as soon as Ortiz gets hit from Wilder, I think it's lights. I say that fight doesn't go two well, rounds. I'm, I'm always I'm a Wilder fan. I don't think the fight goes and two I'm rounds. not picking Ortiz to win. I'm just saying it's going to you be. You just say it's going to be yeah, better. Yeah, here he goes. Wilder's right. the best heavyweight there is. He'll beat Joshua. He'll beat Parker. He'll beat anyone Ooh. out there. Okay. Right now in today's heavyweight world, you can't beat him. And 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 people that are looking forward to him fighting Joshua, they better to take a backseat because it's not going to happen. Well, we'll it's going to be like that Canelo, uh, Canelo Triple G Alvarez where you talk about it for four or five years and Canelo waits for Triple G to get <laughs> old. Down. And that's exactly what's going to happen with Joshua. And Wilder's not going to want to go up there to fight. Joshua's going to be complying and selling out arenas in, in the UK. And that fight's not going to happen for a while. Well, real quick, we only have a few seconds left. So i got to ask you, there's been some rumblings about Denver's Mike Alvarado. Um, what do you see the potential for him? Any rumblings that you've heard about that I haven't heard? I'll tell you what. Uh, I Mike Mike works out right next to us. We're in the same in the same building, the same gym. Actually, we share the same space. And Mike looks the best that he's looked ever since I've seen him. And I've known Mike since he was a kid, six years old, mm -hmm. when I used to train his father, his biological father. I used to train right. little Ronnie Cisneros. 
and uh, he'd bring Mike to the gym. And Mike must have been four or five years old, just just mm -hmm. coming to the gym. So, uh, Mike looks very good now. Okay, he's he's now switched trainers. Uh, Rick Rick Lopez helps senior, uh, but now he's focusing. He's being trained by Toti, you know, the Cuban uh, the Cuban Olympian trainer. He's training the Olympians of, uh, back in Florida. And set the fees and set the fees and. Uh, He's actually he's actually looking real good. The problem Mike has real quick before we end this segment is he, he hasn't fought a big name on his comeback to be able to get them six figure uh, payday. So people were talking about he's going to fight Pacquiao, and you read the stories, but don't believe everything you f read on the web because web writers are web writers. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it it's came right from, from it, likes. It came right out of uh, uh, Bob Arum's mouth. Uh, Dan Raphael from ESPN actually asked uh, Bob Arum about the fight because it was going it was it was going all over the internet that Mike and uh, Manny Pacquiao were were in the works, and Bob Arum just stopped that right there. He says, "No, we that's never even been talked about, mm -hmm. and I'm and that's top rank." So, mm -hmm. and it it can be uh, uh, Pacquiao has to fight a name if he's going to stay a marquee fighter, if he's going to fight on Showtime pay-per-view and all that. So I honestly wanted to talk. I'm going to take one minute, though, because i got to put this dig at Lomacheco because I like Lomacheco's fight. He's ducking Pacquiao. Okay? That is in negotiations, according to Bob Arum. And Pacquiao <clears throat> has agreed to come down to 135 to fight Lomacheco. And Lomachenko's side is saying, no, there's nothing to gain by fighting Pacquiao. <laughs> Come on. What do you mean there ain't nothing to gain? You beat Manny Pacquiao. You've just elevated yourself uh, uh, as far as can. He's ducking Pacquiao. Because we talked about it on the last segment. Pacquiao is too small to be fighting at 147. Yep. That's why he's having problems. When he went and fought Horn, Horn was so much bigger than him that he had a struggle just to just to get the respect and hurt Horn. I yep. mean... Pacquiao has to come back down. Remember, he started at 106, okay, and, and started getting out. championships. Now when he fights at 147, he steps on the official scale, and he weighs 145 or something. He cannot fight that big, and then in the ring, he's in, ending up fighting someone that's in the ring at 156, 160 pounds. And bring he's back, he's bring Pacquiao that, back down to 135 or 130 where he has to be, and he will show you that he hasn't lost anything. And, and Lomachenko knows that. They don't want to fight him. They're ducking him. And I'll say that. They're ducking Pacquiao. You know, one of the things I do is I hate to agree with this dude, you know, but you're right on this one. You know, I, I, I have to agree with you 100%. You know, we've said it for the longest. You and I, we've yeah. done it on our shows for 10 years now. We've talked about it that Manny Pacquiao's correct weight is 135. Okay? I don't know at this, at this stage in his age if 135 is something that he can do and still have Sure uh, effect, well, we'll see. But you know, well, look, but the look, fact is, look no, how he fought Horn. But you don't have to worry. The fact is, is Horn's that a big you, guy. you said Lomachenko's ducking him. Yeah. So and, no, and those are both two. two those are top ranked fighters. I go on record so, to say that. So we'll see. I go happens. on record to say that. Okay. Can't make excuses. But anyhow, we went over our time. So <laughs> we'll see you next week when we come back, and we'll do it again. You got it. So in the meantime, hey, we're always side boxing throwdown. Hold them hands. Up. Hold them hands up.